going to call the license hearing and public safety committee agenda uh, meeting to order. Roll call. Um, absent and excused is Amanda. Amanda, oh. yeah, sorry. It's okay. Betty Ackley. Um, Dean Decker. Here. Yes, we have Amanda Salazar. Here. Joe. Joe. Joe Heideman. Joe You're hiding on me? Well, we got the seat. You hiding on me, Joe? No. All right. And I am the chair of the committee, Barb Kelvin. Okay, we're going to do introduction of committee nope. members, staff, and guests. Oh, no, wait. I think the Pledge of Allegiance. I'm sorry. Could everybody stand and do the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Now we'll do the introduction of the community member and guest. And start with Chief. Do you want to pull us off? Chris Domogowski, Police Chief. Eric Montiano, Fire Chief. Kathy Hoffman, City Attorney's Office. Caitlin Krieger, Finance Director. Jessica Huss, Deputy Finance Director. Dean Decker, Alder from District 6. Joe Heidemann, Alder, Alderman District 10. Uh, Alder Person Amanda Salazar, District 3. Chuck Adams, City Attorney. Security Earns Management Analyst. And I'm Barb Feldy, Chair of the Committee and um, President of the Labor Council. Labor Council. I did that last time and president of the committee. Approval of minutes. Anybody have any? Move to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Motion passes. Chair, chair votes aye also. Um, 2023 budget, city attorney. So the, you have the attachments. I can answer any questions that you've got about the budget for our office. Any questions, comments, Joe? Uh, on the forms, is that those are all standard landlines then, or or the phones uh, line item is that is for our oh. land? Oh, that's for ourselves. Yeah. So that's the the. the there's a cell phone reimbursement program, and Liz and I have um, cell phones that are partially paid for by the city. Okay. Any other questions? It says um, discussion and possible action. Um, we will let Attorney Adams let us know when we need to make a motion and vote. Yes, nothing on any of the budgets. Okay. okay. Nope. Um, police department. Uh, so you have our budget and IFC in front of you. Um, the police department's 2023 proposed budget reflects a 3% increase from 2022. This includes a 3.2% in personnel services and 2.5% increase in non-personnel services. Um, so if you look at personnel services, um, you'll see the roll-ups um, from the salaries from both the contracts that were settled um, and the wage study increases, including um, the temporary salaries account, which is for the crossing guards, and then the corresponding roll-ups and the other benefits as a result of that. Um, in non-personnel services, um, the changes that I would note, um, one is in um, the IT service fund, and actually that number in the IFC is wrong. Um, so there, there's a large increase there, but part of that is about $40,000 that was from another account when those accounts got combined. So the increase is actually 6%, which is $16,046. Um, then there's a subsequent decrease in the account under it, software maintenance and subscriptions, and that's because that's where that $44,000 came from. Um, some of the other accounts, there's a decrease in range supplies, although that account is flat as it's been over the past probably 10 years. Um, the reason that it was bigger, if you're looking at the budget in the previous years, 
is because of the supply shortage for ammunition. So it was taking us about two years um, to get our ammunition orders fulfilled. So some of that rolled over from the previous year. Um, slight increase, $2,153 in utility costs, and then $1,524 in janitorial services. So those are the major changes. If anybody has a question. Amanda? For audiovisual supplies, is that specifically for within the building or within the cars or? Um, it's for, for the whole department. For and the so um, there's, I believe there's a decrease there. Maybe it, not. Uh, it, I mean, it just looks slide. like. Um, so it's it's um, DVDs that we need to do to use to um, fulfill but, public records requests. Non other not IT related things to things that would be like. It's for operating Box. services. Got yeah. It. Okay, that's what I was trying to clarify. Yep. Great, thank you. Chairman. Um, okay, Alderman Pearson. Yeah. Gasoline. Wow, what a jump. <laughs> okay, I, I guess that oh, yeah. there the idea is is that going to be is that going to be enough? It would or is, if I had a crystal ball, I could answer that. Okay, well, okay, well, how, how did you how did you do it this year? Um, we're provided a a, a rate from Bernie Romer. Okay. Um, what they're projecting the, the fuel cost to be, and then we have a three year average for gallons of fuel that we use. Okay. And so multiply those two, and that's the number. It, it's not like you buy in a, in a in a co op area where you set one they set one price, you buy it all at one time, and then you use you work off off a of balance no the city except for um, dpw or parts of dpw um, essentially has a contract through quick trip right and so they get a reduced price for them and they take all the taxes off and all of that mm -hmm. um, so we're um, estimating i think it was like 360 i'm gonna find it 366 per gallon, and we average 44,300 gallons a year. Well, I guess my concern is the last thing that I'd want to have happen is a decrease in service because gasoline costs so much. And I know there are departments and counties and all, you know, because of what we're going through right now. We would do essentially the same thing that we did this year. We're budgeting this, and then if it needs to be an adjustment, we would talk to Kate, Caitlin and try to do a budget adjustment either from somewhere in our budget or from the contingency fund. Oh, yeah, okay. Any other questions, comments? That's a good question, Jeff. All right. Does that leave a vote or anything? Okay, discussion on that. Perfect. Um, well, there's a budget overview, and that's about it. Or fire department. Fire department. Oh, I'm so sorry. That's, that's right. I'm sitting down. I'm short. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're sitting. Uh, all right, Madam Chair. Thank you. Um, so you guys all have the information in front of you. A uh, couple of the highlights. You'll see our gasoline increased about twenty six thousand due to the cost. Um, our medical medical supplies also increased about eighteen thousand. And the firefighting supplies increased about 13,000, all because of supply issues. And um, our uh, firefighting, we had to buy a few more uh, spare SCBA bottles, which is our breathing air we bring into the fires. Um, so this is our first fiscal year that we are seeing the entire year as our uh, combined fire and EMS. So you'll notice on that spreadsheet that it was, um, it almost mirrors, it's less. Than what previous years were because that's the 101 fund, the 280 was separate. So this will be the first year both 10 EMS 280 and Fire 101 are together. So if you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer. All right. This one um does it need anything? No, right? No. No. Yeah. All right. I think Amanda had a question. I have a question. Amanda. I see that you cut development. What exactly was that? How does how's that affecting your staff and what is it? So we we uh, it just we had to cut some of our training employee development just to meet the budget. Uh, it was the easiest to cut from there because the other ones are hard and fast mm -hmm. supplies and equipment we need. Not that we don't need training, but I got to get something for a zero percent. So that's why we had to cut. Okay. 
and how many employees is that affecting? Is like well, the, it's department-wide. Some of them could have been conferences that we right. would have attended. Some okay. of them would have been a class. We were going to have an airway class for EMS that we'll just try to do next year or try to seek grant dollars for. Okay. So, yeah. Thank you. Can some of that cost be passed on to um, the email services, you know, that the rate for, you know, your gas and stuff like that? Can you push that on to? So we, as the chief explained, Bernie gives us an estimate for gas prices and, and what the potential increase would be, and we figure that into our budget. Uh, when we cut things like this, 30,000 that we cut from employee development, um, it's truly the, the ambulance fees that we already have wouldn't really impact this because it's not necessarily only medical or EMS training. It's all training, so it could be fire related, so that wouldn't work. But our EMS um, ambulance fees are already set. We could we evaluate them every year to stay uh, current with the market and what other departments are doing. So and competitive. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. We still want to kind of stay under Orange Cross a little bit as well. So we're right there. Right. Sure. Uh, great. So, um, like one of the things that is just taking over from, from from being overseas a little bit, asking some of the things that they were. Um, you, you you don't charge at all for like so like a car accident or anything like that. So the state of Wisconsin, because of the um, the uh, expenditure restraints, yes, uh, we can't charge uh, the full amount that we would like to based uh, like a fire recovery where if you had a car fire or a car accident, it's, yes. The federal government has X amount of dollars associated with those. Okay. Um, we do charge uh, $500 for a car accident that we extricate out of. Okay. And that's been in play long before my time. So I don't think it has an effect on the expenditure restraint because okay. we've already we've had it in play. So we do charge a little bit, but okay. usually a car accident where you cut somebody out of the car, uh, let's say you pop a door and stuff. Sure. That, that's about a three thousand dollar fee that we could charge okay. but everybody thinks we, we are charging the resident or the people but it's really the insurance companies because they that's, by law have what, to have money set aside that's what they were talking about over there yeah. so I kinda, you know, but we can't do that in, in the state of wisconsin okay yeah any others mm -hmm. we could just go back to my item yep um so i also have to present the meg unit budget so that was included in the documents and for 2023 there's a 0% increase in, in that budget. Nice. What is that in, in here? Oh I see it better. I'm getting it. All right. All right. We're gonna move on to and the make unit again meeting, no it's not resolution. The make unit is a multi-jurisdictional unit that um, us, the sheriff's department, and uh, Plymouth are part of and okay. fall part time. Mm -hmm. So we all work together cooperatively. Um, we have an office off site and a supervisor from the Sheboygan Police Department uh, run. Okay. And you specifically the MEG unit focuses on on the things on the IFC. So it works to identify and disrupt drug trafficking organizations operating within Sheboygan County. Yeah, okay. They provide drug abuse prevention and educational services mm -hmm. to local groups and schools within Sheboygan County, and they work to identify and respond to emergency drug problems within Sheboygan County. Okay. Chief, is there any chance that they're going to get uh, state grants back? No, they, they, they got zero, zero, and before that, you got quite a bit of money. Um, so we still get some grant funds. Um, we won't find out out until later in the year, most likely. Um, over about the last five years, it's been about twenty four thousand, of which about ten thousand, I believe, is actual grant funds from um, the feds. That's a pass through through the state, and the rest of the money um, comes from the state as part of um, essentially um, court fees or fines that they're passing on. Try to make that up. So, like you said, 20 years ago when they were really pushing kind of collaborative efforts like this, we would probably get to over $100,000, and that gradually um, was cut until a 
probably about six years ago is where it landed at about 24,000. So I would guess that that's about what we'll get this year. Um, and then we have been getting some other grants. So you'll see some of that show up in some of these. Um, the last couple ones that we've gotten have been to replace vehicles. So at this point, I think we've replaced every vehicle in the main unit, except for maybe one over the last probably three years. Um, so we've been able to replace a lot of the equipment and supplies through some of those other grants that we got. And then additionally, um, I know the state has applied for some grant funding through the feds for um, heroin and, and uh, opiates and then meth. And so that's through COPS office, but we're waiting to find out whether uh, they're going to receive that money, at which point they'll then notify us. You're not going to see anything for fentanyl? You're not going to? It would fall under the opiates and it's it's limited. So Wisconsin is one of you know multiple people that have that have applied for it, and then they'll score the grants and decide if the state's going to get money um, for this two-year period again or not. Okay. So is there, um, do have you received any monies or are there any monies available from some of the lawsuits from opioids? Um, we haven't personally gotten any direct funds. The county has got some direct funds, and then the state has got a bunch of money from um, some of those lawsuits. I'm guessing that some of that will eventually be passed through or opportunities uh, to apply for some of that. The legislature banned cities from actually suing on those things, and so it has to come through the state. Okay. Anyone else? All right, thank you, Chief. Um, number nine, resolution number 74-22-23, 10-3-22, resolution authorizing the Sheboygan Police Department to apply for and receive funding from the Wisconsin Department of Administration 2022 Law Enforcement Agency grant. Uh, so this is a grant opportunity from the state department of administration received um, state coronavirus funds um, that they're making available to us um, we're eligible for 152,333 dollars and 74 cents that we have between to spend between now and june 30th um, so they actually put the grant out in about April. We were waiting to get the MOU. Um, so now we've received the MOU, which is attached. Um, and so part of the requirement is that we sign the MOU, which essentially tells us what we can spend the money on and requires us to do some reporting so that they can report back to the feds. Um, we're anticipating using some of the funds um, update some of our um, software, investigative software that really needs um, updating. And then one of the other um, allowable expenses is wellness um, initiatives. Um, so we're going to use some of the money for what they call annual wellness checks. So we have a psychologist that we're working with that we're going to be sending everybody in the department to do a wellness check with once a year. Um, and then some of it will be used for some training expenses. Anybody? I move to approve. A second. Okay. Any questions, concerns? No, I, I do support the wellness portion of it. I think that's great. Okay. Can I have a motion? Yep. Yeah, Jean made uh, show, show. I second. Okay, great. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. All right. Chair votes aye. Motion carries. Number 10. Let's see one. Resolution number 75 22 23 10 A resolution authorizing the fire chief to accept and expend funds received from the United States Department of Homeland Security Federal Emergency Management Agency, FEMA, as part of the, the assistance to firefighters grant AFG program. Thank you, Chief. Um, 
Thank you, Madam Chair. So, uh, yeah, we were awarded a uh, grant um, to purchase some auto compression devices, uh, which would uh, allow our paramedics to hook up a patient that's having a cardiac arrest and it does the compressions. Um, so, uh, also freeing up their hands to do other items that they need to do, other things on uh, those type of calls. It comes with a 10% match. So uh, we would just take out the roughly $8,000 that document shows here out of our budget, uh, which due to some of the supply issues has been freed up anyways, we can try to postpone and purchase it in the next fiscal year. So if you approve, you just gotta let them know we can accept it. So how many of these are we getting? Uh, five, sorry. Okay, that's okay, five of them, that's great. Yeah, one for one for each ambulance and then the spare in. So you know this technology was actually available? <laughs> yeah, it's uh, we've never had it here, but they've been around for a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Any, Any other? More? I'll make a motion to accept. Second. Any more discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Motion passes. Thank you for your support. Next meeting date will be October 26, 2022. Motion. Make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed to me. We are adjourned.